Many of us have older cordless power tools like this Milwaukee half-inch hammer drill that I've had for 18 years. Many of the cordless power tools that are sold today don't come close to the level of quality and durability as the cordless power tools that were made years ago. This Milwaukee drill, as you see here, is made in Germany. More than likely, the Milwaukee's that are sold today are made in China. The reason why people end up buying newer cordless power tools is because they want a lithium ion battery pack. This Milwaukee drill used NICADs or nickel metal hydride battery packs, which have much less capacity, memory issues, and they weigh more. You also have the problem of finding new quality battery packs for older cordless power tools, and if you do find a seller, the price is usually a ripoff. Today I'm going to show you how to convert this 2.4 amp hour battery pack into a higher quality, lighter, and much higher capacity battery pack, more than double the 2.4 amp hour capacity of the one you see right here. To do that, I'm going to be using the Tesla Model 3 2170 cells that were extracted from a brand new Tesla Model 3 battery module. I showed you these in a previous video and I tested them. When the conversion is complete to lithium ion, I'll be able to take the battery and use the original charger. Now inside this battery pack, which I'll show you in a minute because I'm going to be opening it up, are 15 1.2 volt cells. So 15 times 1.2 gives you a nominal voltage of 18. When this battery pack is fully charged, using this charger, the voltage is right around 21 volts. And that's also the perfect voltage for charging five lithium ion batteries using a battery management board. Now if you take a look at the terminals on the battery pack, inside this opening you're going to see three male blades. The one on the far left is battery positive, and the one on the far right is battery negative. Now the one in the middle comes off of a thermistor. It's used for monitoring the temperature of the cells inside this battery pack. One leg of the thermistor is connected to battery negative, and the other leg is right here at this terminal. The charger for this battery not only looks at the voltage to know when it's fully charged, but it also looks at temperature. In order to open this battery pack, you need to remove one, two, three, four, five Torx screws. There is going to be a space issue inside this battery pack in order to accommodate these 2170 cells. As you can see, it's way too tall to be put upright, and I need to have five of these. And if you do this, you're going to see that you could pretty much do two. If I try three, it's too wide. It goes past the plastic. So I'm hoping they can be arranged like this, lay one in the center, and then put another one off to that side, and another one off to that side. We also have to leave room for the battery management board. Now right here with the cover removed, you can see all those cells inside. Slide the cover off to the side and remove the plastic clip. Just gently pull up on that. Once that's removed, take out the metal spring clip, and then we're going to flip it around, do the same on the opposite side. Remove that metal clip as well. And then you can hold the battery pack and slide out all the nickel cadmium batteries. You can see them right here. Right there is the thermistor with some thermal compound. It was tucked down between two cells. This wire here that's blue is battery negative, and the red one is battery positive. Next thing I need to do is make sure that the five Tesla 2170 cells can fit inside the plastic housing. And here you can see that they all fit inside perfectly, but I did have to take my Dremel with a grinding stone to smooth out a few areas on the inside. Now each one of these Tesla Model 3 cells are not tabbed, and when I usually connect this many cells in series, I would use my battery spot welder. Unfortunately, I cannot find the cable or the tips for my battery spot welder. So we're going to be doing this the old-fashioned way by using a flat tip 40 watt soldering iron. If you do it properly and do it quickly, as I'm about to show you, you will not damage any of these cells. You're going to need some liquid rosin flux, 60-40 rosin solder, and you're going to need the 40 watt flat tip soldering iron. Before I connect all the cells in series, I'm going to show you on one cell how simple it is to solder directly to the cell. 
For this demonstration, I'll be using the same wire for the battery pack. It's 16 gauge stranded copper. You're going to apply one to two drops of liquid rosin flux. Then you're going to take a well tinned soldering iron and push it down directly over that area. You don't have to hold it that long. And as you can see, after only two to three seconds, you have a very nice connection. Now on the other side of the battery, the negative side, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to apply one to two drops of liquid rosin flux. On this end, you're going to have to hold a soldering iron in position a little bit longer. And you'll see why you have to use at least a 40 watt soldering iron. If you were using a 30 watt soldering iron, you would not have good results. And that looks pretty good. When I clean it, you can see it float in around the edges. Now that all five cells are connected in series, you can see the positive and negative wire. Let's go on to the next step. I'm going to be using the 15 amp BMS that you see right here. And the most important thing in order to use the battery along with the charger is that you only have two connections for the output. You want to be able to charge and discharge from these two leads. Many people use this type right over here. It goes up to 20 amps. But the problem is you have a separate wire to charge and a separate wire to discharge. So you cannot use this on the battery pack if you intend on charging it with the same charger. There's only one board that I located that you can use that happens to be 20 amps and it looks like what you see right over here. Unfortunately, you cannot find this in the United States. It comes from China and you have to wait at least a month to get it. The only problem I may have, because this is a 15 amp instead of a 20, is when you do start up the drill, you have inrush current. And the inrush current on this drill is around 16.5 amps. Sometimes it's around 17 or close to it. And this may deactivate the drill from working. If it does, there is a very simple fix that I can do. And that fix is also going to increase the life of the electric motor. Let me quickly go over how all the connections are going to be done now that the cells are connected in series. Over here is your battery negative from all five. Connects to this point. You see this connector? The black wire is going to be soldered directly to this battery on the end, the negative. The far end is positive and it connects to the opposite end of the battery bank. Then you're going to get the next one in line between these two the next one between these two, this one there, and the last one over here. Let me connect all this together and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. You can see how nicely all the connections went together. Everything placed back inside the housing. Got my positive and my negative wire and the connector for the battery management board. And the batteries, each one of those cells is below the surface so when the cover goes on, there's not going to be any problem screwing it down. Now that the battery management board is plugged in, we're going to take the positive connected to the red wire right here on the cover. This is the negative, the blue wire, and it's going to be connected to this point on the board. This point here connects to the negative from the battery pack. The thermistor is going to be in this position right here on that center battery. We're going to apply some thermal compound to it and then it's going to be inserted through this piece of foam and the foam is going to push down on the thermistor when the cover is screwed down tightly. Now we have the board installed and you can see it fits perfectly on that end of the battery. I inserted some foam pieces to keep everything from moving around. The negative wire is connected. All I have to do now is take this red wire and connect it to the other wire that's remaining and then insert the thermistor, put the piece of foam on top and screw down the cover. Now that everything is together, what I'd like to do is test to make sure that the battery management system is going to turn off power to the cells when it climbs to a certain voltage. So let me turn this on first. This is set for a maximum of 22 volts and we're going to have a maximum of 2.5 amps charging output. Take the black, connect it to the far right. Take the red, connect it to the far left. And right over here, it's 20.8, 2.5 amps is flowing in through the battery management board. Now what I want to do is keep watching this. I want to see if this turns off 
when it reaches around 21.5, 21.7 volts. If it does, you're going to see the 2.5 amps all become zeros. Okay, we're at 21.34 volts. 2.5 amps or close to it is still flowing into this battery pack. And very soon this should turn off. This should jump to 22 volts and this should read zeros. If it doesn't, that's going to indicate a fault with the battery management system. Oh, and you saw it just turn off at 21.67. We're showing all zeros. That's a big thumbs up for the battery management board, an indication that it's working. Now right here, with everything back together, when I squeeze the trigger fast, the BMS keeps the drill from powering up because of excessive current. But if the drill is gradually powered up, you see it comes on just fine. So let me show you what to do if you decide to use the exact same board that I used for your cordless drill. The drill is connected to the battery pack using these 18 gauge jumper wires. So if I go to start it quickly, you can see it stops very fast. But if I place this component right here, an SL22 inrush current limiter in series between the battery and the drill, watch what happens. No problem at all. Now because there's plenty of space in the handle, and it's also ventilated, I'm going to be installing the inrush current limiter right at this location. And now when we try it, you can see it works just fine. Okay, let's try drilling a hole through concrete. And as you just saw, the drill had no problem at all drilling through concrete. Now the last thing I want to do is discharge the battery pack just a little bit more and then we're going to slide the battery onto the charger to make sure that it charges. Okay, let's slide this on. And right there is a steady red that's indicating that current is flowing into this battery pack. I'm going to let this sit for a while to see if this light turns off. When it turns off, that indicates that the battery is fully charged and we're going to measure the voltage at the terminals on the battery pack. Okay, 20 minutes has passed and we're still charging. Hopefully this does turn off and as you can see, it turned off. So let's take this away and see what kind of voltage we have. Right around 20.58. So my suspicion is that this is turning off the power to the battery pack just a little bit before the battery management system stops charging the battery pack. So it's going to extend the life of these cells because we're not charging them 100%. More than likely we're charging that battery pack to around 95%. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up share and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.